Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Teach your children well. That's our topic today. Teach your children well. How to teach your children well. And specifically, I'm going to review a curriculum, a homeschooling curriculum, right? a curriculum for teaching your own children. Now, I'm going to be reviewing a curriculum. Curriculum just means a, well, the basic meaning is, is a plan of teaching or a plan of studying. But in this case, I'm also going to review a, a whole set of materials from a company called Sunlight. Sunlight. And this is the one I'm using f with my own children. So today I'm reviewing, I, we just received our big box of books and materials from them. So I'll be talking about showing you even some of, some of the things that they sent us. And this is the pre-K and kindergarten program. Pre-K means before kindergarten, so like around age four. And then kindergarten, age five, and some people do age six even. So I'm doing this to just show you what is available. To give you an idea, if you want to teach your own children English, for example, a lot of you want to teach your, your children English, and you need to do it at home because you know that the schools are not good at teaching English. You know that they're probably not going to learn English well in school. But if you teach them at home, they could be fluent. In fact, you know, just, just recently, I don't think he'd mind if I talked about this, but uh, uh, one of my uh, old VIP members named Max, who's in Italy, he texted me and we were chatting, and, and he told me how his son, who I think is 12 or 13 now, is uh you know really really good at english better than him and max is really good <laughs> max is fluent in english speaks very well he said his son is even better and he taught his son at home he taught his son english at home so you can do it okay and, and max is italian right he's, he's not a native speaker he learned to speak english you know using effortless english and then he just did the same things with his son so you can do it and uh you can teach your children a lot of things at home. I recommend if you really are serious, teach your children everything at home. Homeschool them. Don't send them to school at all. That's what I'm doing. But some of you will be sending your kids to school, but maybe you want to do extra at home. That's also good. So we're going to I'm going to show you there's this one, so this this is one company called Sunlight and they have there are a lot of these companies you can find online. OK, so a lot of people you worry, like, how do I do it? Which books should I use? And it can be very confusing, right? There's like so much to do. You want to teach math. You want to teach English, you know, uh, reading and, and writing and all these things. And a very simple thing to do is you just uh, you find a company you like and you can just buy a whole year of books and materials from them and they will send it to you. This is an American company, they sent, but they sent it here to me in Japan. And so I now have, you know, two years of books and materials for math, reading, and writing for, my, for both my kids. So I'll, I'm going to show you, this gives you an example. You could choose a different company if you wanted to, but I'm just going to give you an example of what you can get. And it makes your life easier, right? Because they do a lot of the work for you. They organize a lot of things. And then you can change it, add to it subtract right just to give you an idea all right so the company is called sunlight and i'm going to turn my uh i'm going to turn my camera around now and let's see if i can uh get this camera going there all right you can watch me here for a minute while i get this camera adjusted let's see we can do okay here I move this camera a little bit oh, da, 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 da. Okay, and kind of there, right there. Let's see how it looks. And I'm going to tip it down now. And then do 
came out. Get out, out, let in, out. There we go. Okay, let's see if I can get it. There we go. Right, okay, here we go. This should start giving you an idea. All right, so this whole bookshelf, let me get to, sorry about that. This whole bookshelf, and it goes all the way down here, is my, it, it's books and uh, materials, almost all of it from Sun, the Sunlight Company uh, for my kids. So this is a, about a two-year plan, learning plan for them. Okay, so pre-kindergarten. And kindergarten. Now, in addition to sunlight, I also use something called Doman. It's called the Doman method uh, for some specific reasons. But I'll talk about this. So I'm going to just give you, first I'm going to focus on the top ones here. Okay, here we go. There. So in the top corner here, I've got their reading books. Those are just, those are kind of fiction books, story books, okay? In this middle section, these are kind of easy books that have a lot of pictures. This is their level right now. And there's also some really simple books, which I'm going to show you more in a minute, called Fun Tales. I'll put this one on my desk. Okay, then down here, <laughs> well, actually, let's go over here first. Over here, this area is just kind of games and uh, activities. There's some kind of fun games and activities, but they're a little more educational. They require some thinking. Down there, right here, this is uh, math and numbers. Okay, there's a game here. And I'll talk more about how you teach math in, in, in this program and in general. This is uh, nonfiction reading. So this is like his books about history, a lot of stuff about American history in this program because it's an American company, but also other things like that. And then this is kind of more... This area here is are books about science and the natural world. And this big purple box is, is like science experiments, things like that. Okay, and that's it. Let me turn it back around. <laughs> All right, back to me. Okay, there we go. I think you can see me. Oh, they're a little too close. Mm -hmm. Let me adjust my camera here. Sorry, guys. Uh, we're too low, too. There we go. All right, good. All right, back. <coughs> Here we go. So, first let me just review this. What do I like about it? What do I don't? What I like about Sunlight, this company, and this is that there's a lot, it's a lot of literature. It's, it's focused a lot, a lot, a lot on reading. And what I really like is they focus on reading books. So some curriculum, some, a lot of school type programs also, but even homeschool programs, they focus a lot on workbooks, workbooks. So the, the kids are constantly doing these kind of uh, exercises. And basically, they're textbooks, right? They're, it's just like the kind of stuff they do in schools. Textbooks, textbooks, textbooks. I hate that stuff. I hate it. I, I, I hated doing it when I was a kid. Uh, I hate doing it and teaching it as a teacher. I don't like that at all. It's so unnatural. I find it boring. I know some kids can get into it. I know some parents that that like it fine but i don't i hate it but i like books i like books that are either about you know non-fiction about you know the real world or that are storybooks so for example a real a one about the real world this is a book called about reptiles this is also something an adult like you could read this right if or you you guys are you're probably too advanced for this but for beginners, they could read this kind of thing if they're learning English. Reptiles, and it's a nice little book. So my kids are, I'm read, I, of course, I read this to my kids. They can't read it yet themselves. But it's got all kinds of great information, nice pictures, and they learn about snakes and reptiles. And they, then we got a lot of these kind of books about different topics. 
weather, rainforest, bees, ants, different animals. And then there are the, uh, you know, more storybooks. Now, this is one from last year's curriculum, but it's, you know, polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? Right? Hippopotamus, hippopotamus, what do you hear? I hear a flamingo fluting in my ear. And now we, you know, we've read this book so many times. <laughs> so at this age, it's a lot of reading to them. And then it gets more advanced. At the kindergarten level, it gets into basically uh, novels. They start reading novels, like longer book, story books. So here's one, The Adventures of a South Pole Pig. Now, this is something some of you might actually read. See, some of you guys ask me, like, what should I read? I, you know, what's an easy book I could read? Uh, you know, it's Harry Potter's too difficult. Lord of the Rings is too difficult. Uh, adult fiction's too difficult. Well, you could read something like this. The Adventures of South Pole Pig. I haven't read it yet. But, you know, it's just a cute little story. And you can kind of get a feeling for how... How many words are on the page? It's, but it's designed to be, you know, it's a little easier. It has uh, mostly common vocabulary, but still, like, this is very advanced for a kindergarten kid. Very advanced. So, of course, I'll read this to them and have to explain it. But this is how your kids can learn a lot of vocabulary. And if you read this yourself, this can grow your vocabulary, too, depending on your level. But perhaps you can, you might already get the idea that you can see that homeschooling, you know, it tends to be the kids tend to be much more advanced. They, I mean, that's a quite advanced book for a five year old, right? Like I said, they're not read. And why is that? Because in school, the teacher generally the teacher does not sit and read to the students, right? The students are doing workbooks or they're trying to read themselves, but they don't. the teacher's not usually sitting reading to the class a lot, maybe a little. If they do it, maybe they do it a little bit each day, but not a lot, certainly not a long book like that. But as a parent, you can do that because you can, you can just sit down with your kids and read them anything, and you can read them long, long, long books. You don't need to control 30 kids in a class, right? So you, you're able to sit down for longer periods of time and read more and more and more and more advanced books and your child's vocabulary will grow and grow and grow, right? Because you don't need to wait until they can read it. You know, when will my children be able to read that book themselves? I don't know, but, you know, seven, eight years old, maybe? Seven, perhaps? We'll see. But I can read it to them at a much younger age. So this is why reading aloud is very important. And this is important for teaching your kids English, by the way. You can read them, you know, start with very easy things, but then you can eventually read them more and more difficult things. Maybe they can't read it, but you can read it to them and help them grow their vocab. Now for them reading, for my kids reading, this curriculum includes these little simple little books. Now this is their level of reading. Because they're just they're just starting. They can't read words yet, and they're just starting to read words, my kids, but not very well. So this has very simple English, like super simple. Like, see, one sentence on a page. Mac has a map. Mac is the name of this little moose. Mac has a map, <laughs> right? And then the second page. Mac has a fat cat. The cat is Cass. That's the cat's name, right? So you can see. Short sentences, very short words, like three or four letters, uh, and kind of the same basic uh, pattern of the sounds. So very, very easy. These are books that are designed to help uh, young people learn how to read. Adults probably, as an adult learning English, you don't need this. Okay, <laughs> you're way beyond this. But uh, um, for little kids, this is great. So you have kind of two things when you're teaching uh, kids English or uh, reading, even in your own language, and that is when you're small kids, you can read to them and do things that are more and more and more advanced. It should be much higher level, you know, because they're just listening. 
and you can still explain things to them if they have questions. And then for them learning to read, you're going to have to do things very, very simply. So again, in this program by Sunlight, I think the strongest point, the best thing about this curriculum from Sunlight is that it uses real books. It's storybooks. It's all these kind of storybooks. There's no workbooks. There's no like kind of like boring workbooks where they have to, there's just none of, none of that. There's a little bit of that for handwriting, you know, just learning how to write the letters, which you kind of have to do it with writing. But, um, but for reading, it's all just real books. And they've got a lot of books. And you can see I got these three giant boxes all full of books. So very strong. I like it. The second part of the program is math and numbers. Now, again, at, my, at the level of four and five years old, it's not much. But here, the key point is this. You start by teaching, um, you start teaching numbers by not, you know, by using objects, things. So they have, for example, this little game these, with these little blocks. If you can see it, this is an orange block, and it's got two little squares on it. So this is the number two, right? Just writing the number two, like in Arabic numerals, is uh, that's, that's, high, that's a higher level idea, you know, mentally. And for kids who are just learning numbers, it's hard for them to understand that. So instead, you use objects. You could just use coins. You could use uh, rocks, okay? So you say, okay, you know, one, two, and they learn to count one, two, and then one, two, three, right? So it's actual real things. And you can even start to teach basic math using uh, real things. So you have three rocks, and you can say, what if we take away one rock? How many will we have? And you let them think about it. They might know and they might not. You take away one rock. Now how many? Two. That's right. Three minus one is two. Right? What, what if we add one? How many again? Three, right? Two plus one is three. So you're using real objects, real things. Okay? This is the step one for teaching math and numbers to kids. You're not, you're not writing out numbers, the number one, the number two, the number three. That comes later right once they really understand uh, numbers let's say 1 to 20 they're getting some adding and subtracting then you can start writing the numbers and they start they can uh, you can do both then you do you can write it like 2 plus 1 equals 3 but then you still have the objects it could like i said it could be rocks you don't have to buy an expensive game or something you just be rocks it could be anything right but 2 and then you take one away minus 1 equals 1 right and then they can visualize it they can see it they can feel it it's it's real and then finally as they get older you don't need the objects anymore and they can just use the numbers right the written numbers but they've already got in their head a very strong understanding of numbers and what they are and adding and subtracting at least and maybe even multiplying and dividing so this program is nice. Uh, there, uh, at this age, the math program from Sunlight is it's limited. It's very basic, but that's it needs to be. They can't really do a lot more. Um, depends on your child. Like one of my kids is already counting to well, easily counts to twenty, and is uh, uh, with a little help can count to fifty. Like. She kind of logically can figure out, you know, 21, 22. And then she'll sometimes remember, you know, 29, and she, she forgets what's the number. Of, oh, 30. And if I say 30, then she can keep going again. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So, and then my, but my other, my other child is still, you know, struggling with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, you, you can make it very individual with your kids. So, that's another strong point. Uh, there's lots of good science stuff and good, you know, about the natural world. I like that. The ex I haven't looked at the, ex the science experiments, but it, it should be fine at this age. No problem. Uh, the only two things about this sunlight program, which you might not like, or you might want to change, or you might want to modify, are the, uh, the history and the religion. So this is a Christian curriculum. It's from a Christian company. So they are Christian. Um, uh, so what does that mean? 
it's, it doesn't mean much, honestly, because most of the materials, most of the stories, it doesn't matter. They're they're not specifically Christian, right? They're just you know, kind of you know, just decent, virtuous, uh, pro family. You know, they're not. There's no weird, nasty political stuff in it or garbage in it, right? There's, which is why I like it. But there are a few books that were specifically Christian. There's like a kid's Bible. And then there were, yeah, I think, two or three little small books that were very specifically Christian and were even kind of negative towards other religions, I felt. Uh, so uh, specifically um, Buddhism in one book. So I didn't like that. So I just don't use those. I just take those books that are very specifically Christian because I'm not Christian. And uh, we just, you know, I'm going to give them away. Someone else can use them. And what will I do? I'll substitute, right? I'll add in Sanatana Dharma books instead, which I already have some about, you know, instead of Bible stories, we have Krishna stories. We have the Ramayana for kids, a little uh, picture book of the Ramayana, right? So this is, so for the religion part, I've just switched out Sanatana Dharma for Christianity. No problem. And what if you have a different, so if you're a Christian, I think you'll find it fine. If, uh, there, there'll be no problem. You can just use it use this uh, curriculum from sunlight as it is but if you are another religion if your family if you want to teach your kids another religion then you would you'll need to take out a few of the books and replace them with kids books from your own religion if you're not religious at all then you just take them out it's pretty simple and finally the 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 the, the one other thing that you might want to change if you got this curriculum from Sunlight, is the history. Because it's an American company, so mostly American families are buying this. So the history is super focused on American history. Okay, it's just like 90% American history. It's for Americans. So again, if you... Now, if you are living in America as an immigrant or something, that maybe that's okay then. Your kids can learn American history. But if you're, you know, if you're in another country, then... Uh, you might want to either sell the American history ones or at least add to them, right? If you, if you don't mind your kids learning American history, that's okay. But, you know, if you're Mexican, then you probably want to get some books for kids uh, about Mexican history because uh, you're not going to get it from them. You know, if you're a Brazilian, Brazilian history. So, for example, our family, you know, we live in Japan and my kids are half Japanese and half American. So we will use all this American stuff because they are American. But they also need to learn about Japanese history. So I'll be, and, and my wife also, will be looking for books about Japanese history that uh, and, and geography and things like that that uh, are good for their level. So that's it. So overall, I'd say it's a very, very, very good. I'm happy with it. We have a lot of material. We have a lot of books to read. And what I will do is I will just add to these books. So we'll, we'll read more than this. This seems like a lot already, and it is. But uh, we read a lot of books. So for example, my kids are also learning Japanese. So we have a whole bookshelf in our uh, other room, in our kitchen, full of Japanese, well, half full of Japanese books. And then I, I buy a lot of extra English books. You know, the number one thing you can do for your kids, younger kids especially, is read to them. This is number one. If you have young kids, preschool, kindergarten, even first, second, third grade, even in fourth grade even, fifth grade, you read to your kids, read to them, sit down with them and read books to them. And you can start with picture books. In fact, at the youngest level, when they're like two years old, one years old, when they're little babies, you can just point to the pictures in the book and talk about it. You don't even need to read the actual story. That's what I did. I just, because sometimes the story was too, I felt too much, too difficult um, when they were really small, little babies. So I would just say, look, oh, there's a bear. What's the bear doing? Oh, he's eating. Oh, what's he eating? He's eating some berries. Oh, what kind of berries are those? Oh, there he's got strawberries. He has blueberries. So I didn't even tell the actual real story. I would just show the nice pictures and talk about the pictures. 
Then uh, as they got a little older, I would tell the story, but I would use easier words, you know, because sometimes, again, I felt like it was too long, too much. So I would look at the picture and use easy words and very short sentences. And now, now that they're four, about four years old, now I'm actually reading the everything in the book. Like I'm reading the, all the sentences and they're getting a lot of new words from that. Right. And that's what I'll do. I'll go into the we'll get into longer and longer books and eventually books with no pictures. Right. But you can do this. I remember as a kid when I was in fourth grade, one of my probably one of the things that made me into a, a, a reader, someone who loves reading. was I remember my fourth grade teacher, she read The Hobbit and The Fellowship of the Ring and The Two Towers to our class. So she read them out loud. She, we would all sit at our desks. She was at the front of the, uh, uh, the class, and she just would, you know, read one chapter per day. I think is what she did. She also read uh, C.S. Lewis, "The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe" to us. So that got me. So I was so excited. I loved, especially Lord of the Rings. I was so excited to keep. I wanted to read the Two Towers by myself because, I mean, the uh, Return of the King because I wanted to know how did it end. <laughs> so, you know, fourth grade, nine years old, that it, it was a great, great, great experience. So read to your kids and you can continue reading to them. As they get older, like more, more like middle school and high school level, you can, if they don't want you to read to them, understandable, you can read with them, meaning do it like a book club. Do it like a book club. So you and your child... Let's say your teenage child who's 14. You say, let's read a book together and you let them, you know, choose with you, right? You can suggest some ideas, but you don't just, it's not like school where you assign, you say, you must read Hamlet by Shakespeare, right? No, you say, Which, let's read a book together. We're going to have a book club and uh, we're going to read it and then we're going to discuss it, right? So no tests, no writing papers about it. No, you're going to talk about it, discuss it like adults do. Okay, you're gonna, it's going to be just like you would with adults. You're going to sit around and, and read a chapter, then uh, sit down together and talk about it. So you can say, well, what, what? you want to read a fantasy book? You want to read nonfiction, you know, some motivational book? And, and just talk to your kid. You know, each kid has different interests. So you know your child better than I do. Uh, so you help them and you figure out and you read a book together. So maybe you could read The Hobbit together. Let's read The Hobbit. Maybe they saw the movie and you say, well, let's read the book. I heard the book's better. So let's, let's read The Hobbit. And if your kid agrees, so you say, all right, we'll read The Hobbit. Let's read chapter one this week. So you both read chapter one individually. And then you schedule a time. You could go to a coffee shop together or just sit down at home and say, all right, let's talk about it. What happened in chapter one? What did you think about it? Oh, I like it. Oh, this is kind of neat. Or I didn't like this. Or I like that. This was funny. And you just chat about it, right? Like, like you would... Like I said, like you would as an adult, don't do like a school thing. What was the main theme of the chapter? That takes all the life out of reading. It make, takes all the enjoyment out if you, if you make them super analyze it. Don't make them super analyze it. Don't make them look for the symbolism. and no, Definitely don't make them write papers about it. You can do writing, but do it in a different way. You know, just get, just help them love the book and talk about what you liked and didn't like. And just just the same way you would a movie. Right. Same thing. And this is a great way to help your child develop this love of reading. And it's never too late. You can even do this with teenagers. Like I said, you could do it with teenagers. It's best if you start when they're very, very young, but you can do it with teenagers as well. All right, so reading to your kids, reading with your kids, that's number one, number one, number one. Everything else is kind of extra. <laughs> yes, you'll need to do some stuff with numbers and math, of course. And you can do a lot of that with games and objects in the beginning. So that's also fairly enjoyable, but mostly read to them. There are other things that you may need to do depending on your child. Let's get get into comments and questions and then I'm gonna go okay Ahmadullah Yusufi says how can I improve my writing skills 
The number one way to improve your writing skills is through a lot of reading. And what kind of reading? Reading books. So reading exactly. Uh, let's see. Here's another one. Reading novels like this, like these kind of novels for kids and teenagers are a great way to start because your your brain will absorb, will learn the sentences, the patterns, even grammar. You actually will improve. There's a, there's a lot of research, S.D. Krashen, Stephen Krashen did a lot of research or uh, analyzed a lot of research about writing. And this is number one is lots and lots of reading and reading what? Books, story books. So again, look at this one. This one's called the Millie Molly Mandy Storybook. It's just a funny little book about a girl who likes dresses. <laughs> okay, this is it. It's just a cute little storybook. Again, I haven't read this one yet, but it's pretty easy. The whole point of this is that it's a, it's a cute book and it's kind of fun and easy. But, uh, you know, still, I think, interesting enough for an adult. Here's another one. My Father's Dragon. Okay, this is a kid's story. Okay, so these kind of books. Read these kind of books. Every day, read for an hour if you can. And this is the simplest way to improve your writing because it will happen uh, kind of unconsciously and naturally. And it will also build, you'll learn a lot of vocabulary this way and it's enjoyable. Now, for higher, more advanced levels of writing, you may need to get some kind of tutor or coach or someone to help you with your mistakes and that kind of thing. But uh, uh, the foundation, the best thing to do is read a lot. When An says, I think it's also my case. My son speaks English very naturally, but he's bad at reading and writing. So you just got to get him interested in reading. Again, get him excited about it. Oh, cool. Anna Grigoreva, good to see you. As always, says, I've heard about homeschooling from your life lessons. Uh, I never heard this before. I'm really interested in this. My kids are 1.5 and 4 years old now. Homeschooling isn't popular in Russia, I guess. Yeah, some countries it's not, but that's okay. It's not popular in Japan either, but we're doing it. And you're, you know, 4 years old is the perfect time to start. One and a half, you can start doing things for that matter. Yeah, Al Almantasser says, I think English stories help significantly. It will help kids to improve reading and learn new vocabulary. Absolutely. Nasser, good to see you. Has been a while. Good to see you live, yes. Yeah, like Anna following up says, it's fascinating that you can choose by yourself what kind of information your kids will be given. No garbage, no crap, which the schools always try to push in on our children. Well, exactly. This, these, the schools are always, always, always trying to fill your kid's head with garbage. They always have some political agenda, some political motivation, and usually it's evil and bad. Uh, Sometimes it's small, sometimes it's large, but it's always garbage. Why should you let them do that? Don't let them do that. Take them out, teach yourself, teach your kids yourself, and then you know exactly what they're learning. Yeah, cool. So Nasser says, uh, stories are very useful for kids and adults too. When I started to read stories, my English level moved up pretty quickly. Yeah, exactly. Reading these kind of books, and you can get the audio books also, but reading these books will help your, your vocabulary grow much faster. It really does, will help a lot. Plaster says, in Poland, primary school is compulsory. How is it with you? 
Yeah, but usually you can, I don't know about Poland, but in most countries you can, uh, as long as, you know, just do it yourself at home. You don't have to send them to school. Do the, do it at home. And there's different laws and every country's different. So you're going to have to, you got to figure that out yourself. Do some research online. Lily White says, AJ, why didn't you teach your kids by the Doman method? Whole words. I am using Doman also. Why did you choose phonetic method? Um, I'm doing both. In last year's, you told us kids can't read and they're just learning sounds. Um, I do both. So this, this is a good point. This is a good question, actually, uh, to, to bring up. In the schools, you, uh, there's online, you know, all these people arguing and fighting and arguing and fighting about these two ways of reading whole word and phonics what does that mean phonics just means focusing on the letter sounds right b makes the b b b sound and then whole words that means you just show a card i'll show you we're doing domen so i have a bunch of goman cards here's one right here right monday it says monday so we do the i do this every day we do this about I'm actually increasing it. I was only doing it. I wasn't doing it enough. So I, I'm doing following the Doman method more carefully now. I'm going to talk to uh, Melissa Doman soon and get a you know consult with her, get their suggestions. But you know, basically about five times a day, we go through a big stack of cards. About I think right now we've got about twenty cards we do, and it's just sight words. So I just show them this. I say Monday, and then boom, next card, boom, next card, boom, next card, boom, really fast, really fast. So there's no time for them to try to figure out every little letter sound. They just learn to see the whole word to all at once, all of it together, and they remember what it says. Now, this is actually how we read as advanced readers. We don't sound out. Once you learn a word, you just learn, you, you kind of see the first letter, the last letter, how long it is, and it's kind of like a picture. It's almost like reading a Japanese kanji character or something, right? We're not, I'm not going, when I'm reading this word, for example, me, I'm not going Monday, 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 right? That would be, it's so slow. It would take forever to read that. If you had to read every word like that, your reading would be so slow, right? So we learn whole word by, we see it as a picture and we just say it, right? We're not focusing on every little letter sound. But the letter sounds, it is useful to, I believe, to learn the basic letter sounds. Uh, number one, it makes, it helps the kids uh, just recognize, right? Because we do use the letters to read, you know, like I said, especially the first and last letter of a word, we will use to kind of see and identify that word quickly, right? And of course, when we see a new word we don't, we've never seen before, then we have to use phonics, right? Like if I've never read this word, if this is a totally new word, I know, I don't know what it is. I've never seen this. How, how can I read it? Well, then I have to use the letter sounds, right? Then I'm going to go Monday, Monday, Monday. Oh, it's Monday, right? If I know the word already verbally, I can figure it out. So they're both useful. I, I, so I, you know, there, like I said, there's a big, you'll see people fighting about this teachers and things, but you don't, you don't have to choose. Just do both. That's what, and that's what Stephen Krashen, by the way, recommends as well. Who Stephen Krashen is a, Dr. Krashen is a very famous researcher in language, language and learning, reading, literacy. And he recommends exactly that, that you should do both. Learn basic phonics, meaning just the, you know, kind of the, common sounds of the letters there's a lot of except in english unfortunately there's so many weird exceptions right you know a, a language like spanish is so much more consistent right the letter always makes the same sound it's awesome <laughs> but in english right it depends on the word and there some there's some weird words because we get words from all these different languages and uh you can't always figure out from phonics right so you don't need to teach a bunch of complicated rules about the letter sounds just my kids already know phonics they learned all the letter sounds the basic ones they know them all now at age four 
and uh, and they're also learning whole words at the same time. So just do both. Do both. Kapnuk says, uh, when parents teach their children, they also teach themselves. It's a great way to develop together. Yeah, you're right. I've, I learned like, I'm learning like about the reptile book, for example, we read together. There's stuff in there I don't know about reptiles. I'm learning about reptiles now just because I'm reading with them. So Adnan says, what are the basics we should teach our children to build on? Reading, 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 reading is number one. Reading is the basic thing, the foundation of all learning. Reading. And as I said, reading out loud, reading to your kids. That's number one. That's 80%. <laughs> Naoki's saying, do you have a pollen allergy? I don't. But in Japan, this period, there's a lot of pollen. I have allergies, struggling. Yeah, a lot of people I know are having problems with pollen. Spring is coming. Spring is almost here. So the flowers and trees, are right. they're putting out that dust, that pollen, and some people are getting allergies, sneezing. Ouch. All right. I think that's about all. So that was just a quick show. I wanted to just uh, talk about the curriculum today, and uh, just because we just got the books, and I just put, I just got them all organized and put them on the bookshelf. Just started with my kids, so I said my kids are just now four years old, just turning four, and I, I just want to give you guys. I'm always wanting to encourage people to do homeschooling, and even if your, even if your kids go to a school, still teach them at home. You have to do it in a way that's enthusiastic and enjoyable, right? Which is, again, why I like this sunlight approach, because reading storybooks to your kids is enjoyable, usually for them and for you. Doing, you know, 10 workbook exercises or going through a textbook and doing a bunch of exercises, for a lot of kids, that's boring, boring, boring. They're, they're, they're going to resist it and they're not going to like it, especially, especially if they're already doing that in school. So they're going to school all day. They're doing workbooks and textbooks and tests. And then they come home. They don't want to do more of that. Can you blame them? I, I don't blame them. Of course they don't. Most kids, they're not, they don't want, oh, more workbooks, really? Uh, a lot of poor kids in Japan, they do that. The parents, they go to school all day. Then the parents send them to like extra school, what are called cram schools, uh, in the afternoons and evenings and they just do more workbooks and more textbooks it's, it's like all their long day you know like they're working overtime doing textbooks and workbooks horrible Ugh. and they do this with english and of course they don't actually learn to speak any english at all um it's sad you know and it's, it's sad to me just for the poor kids it's just that it just you know, mindless and boring, just crushes them, you know. So don't do that. <laughs> if you're totally homeschooling at home, great. You can do a little bit of that if you're doing, if that's all you're doing, is just homeschooling only, they don't go to school, eh, you can do a little bit of that sort of uh, workbook type stuff. If they can, it can help them learn a few things, it's okay. But, uh, but if they're already going to school and you're doing extra at home, then make the extra enjoyable. Like if you're trying to teach your kids English at home, do it with fun videos, do it with stories, do it with these great books, picture books. Just talk to them in English yourself. You don't need to be perfect. And make it enjoyable and fun. And that's all you need to do, right? Don't do tests, don't do textbooks, and don't do workbooks uh, if, they're all, if this is extra, if your kids already go to school. So it's it's... You want to limit that as much as possible. All right, then. That's all for today. So to summarize, I just reviewed the quick, the sunlight uh, curriculum. Great, 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 great for reading. I think that's the strongest thing about the sunlight curriculum is it's reading and literature program. It's literature based, right? 
No workbooks for reading at all. Zero. It's all just real books. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's the heart of the Sunlight program, and that's why I'm using it. The math program, also good. I don't, we'll see when it gets to more advanced levels. I don't know what they do at more advanced levels, but at the kindergarten level, the math program is simple. It focuses on using real objects and these little games and things. Also great. And like I said, like I said, the only thing, two things you might change if you got this curriculum, if you are not in America, you will need to get some uh, history books from your own country for kids because it's very American focused, this curriculum, because it's an American company. And, uh, and then religion. If you're Christian, then I think you'll like this program very much. If you're not Christian, you'll need to change the religious books for something else. That's all. All right. Lots of love to you all. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join my VIP program. If you have kids, teach your kids English also. You can be their English teacher. You should be their English teacher. You will be the best English teacher for your kids. You don't need to send them off to some expensive English school. Probably a waste of money and time. Probably. Most of those schools are not very good. They're, they're, they're stressful and boring for the kids, most of them. They're not very effective, most of them. And you can do more at home teaching your child English than they can. So just teach your own kid English. All right. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. See you next time. Bye for now.